Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Today I'm here with the co-founder and CEO of Vincere Health, Shaylin De Silva, and his co-founder and president, Jake Katayan. How are you both doing? Yeah, very well, thanks. Thanks for having us, Jared. Yeah, excited to have you both on. I think we should dive right into it. If uh, uh, whoever wants to go first uh, wants to start by giving a brief uh brief little uh, discussion on their background, and then we'll have the other do that, and then we'll talk more about Vincere Health. Yeah, cool. I'll dive in. Um, Shalin here. I'm an a investment banker by trade, spent about a decade working in the finance world in, in Singapore and London, and also co-founded an NGO that was doing medical outreach work in Asia, and eventually quit my day job, signed up for a master's in public health at Harvard, and founded this company, Vincere Health, alongside Jake uh, about three years ago. Yeah, uh, my name is Jake Katayan. Uh, I started in healthcare IT consulting uh, for about five years before going back to grad school to meet Chelen. Um, Spent time sort of across the whole landscape of of healthcare in America, working with payers, providers, um, and primarily in the Medicaid space. So that kind of fired me up, you know, when I learned more about the systems and, and how we operate in the Medicaid space and how we think about care delivery there um, to kind of think about how we could do a little, a little bit better. Uh, so that was part of the inspiration on my side and, and wanting to start a company uh, in the Medicaid space. And yeah, like Shalyn said, it's been, uh, been three years, but feels, feels like 10. It's been a lot of fun. If you didn't say the fun thing and you said the feels like 10, I was worried for a second there. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's great. We'd, we've had the learning of 10 years of actual professional life, I think. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Um, it's so what I, what I'd like to shift focus to is you already kind of mentioned it a little bit because this is a little trick, right? When I, I, I usually always ask about people's backgrounds and then I lead into give me the why, how, what of the business. Nine out of 10 times when they're explaining their backgrounds, it always explains all or most of the, the why of the business. Um, because obviously it, it starts with both of you, right? Like your backgrounds kind of shaped why you wanted to go into this business in the first place. So if there's more to it, please tell us. But And I don't know if you guys want to take turns with it, but uh, I'd love to go through what I ask everyone on the show. Give us the why, how, what of your business. And assume people, you know, the people that are listening that have heard of you, but also people that haven't. Yeah, I mean, I can delve a little bit more into my previous life. Uh, working in finance, I wasn't really filled with a lot of purpose and mission. And I co-founded a, a nonprofit that was delivering healthcare services, surgical services to remote communities around South and Southeast Asia. I saw a lot of need and a, a lot of um, kind of lack of, lack of access, but um, you know the opportunity to reach people through digital tools and smartphones and remote health monitoring devices. And um, I was trying to find ways to kind of apply the, the needs that I saw in, in that kind of experience in the U.S. context and apply it through the lens of the health innovation opportunities that I was fortunate to experience at uh, Harvard and, and living in the Boston, uh, you know, among the Boston kind of digital health communities. Um, you know, I think this is very much a mission driven company for the both of us. We want to try and increase access to healthcare and apply some of the behavioral science tools that are maybe locked away in the ivory towers of academia sometimes and, and try and um, innovate with our skill sets as well with payment models and business models that align incentives across a multitude of stakeholders, which is what's necessary to go to market in, in healthcare generally. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, is there anything, Jake, before we kind of move on to uh, some of the topics that we wanted to kind of dive into today that you want to add to that? I don't want to uh, pass over you. No, no, no I, I think it's good. I think um, I touched on a little bit before, but you know, I, I think on my side, there's just not a lot of, uh, a ton of innovation in, in, in the Medicaid space. Um, and you see that uh, in the states that I was working in, in, in New York and Tennessee and Michigan. Um, and it's fun to see a little more um, just talent entering the space, a lot of really excellent software engineers and 
uh, you know, people like Shalen who got dropped in American healthcare and he's learned faster than, than anybody I've ever, you know, ever worked with. So that's been a lot of fun for me. Um, but yeah. No, oh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to shift focus to a question that I had regarding insurance companies. So insurance companies tend to get a bad rap, right? Um, as and this is not you, you did not say this, and this is just what I hear in the industry. But like you know, slow movers, um, they have they have certain priorities that they want to focus in on. But in terms of innovating, many are mo- most of them will end up starting a separate <laughs> insurance, you know, a, a baby insurance company within their insurance company so that they can innovate. Right? Uh, there's there's a couple that have done that. But can you talk us through how do insurance companies adopt new innovations? Um, I could take a stab. So I think taking as much of the the burden of uh, integration, administration, rollout, um, and even risk of outcomes away from them as possible and uh, adopting that for yourself as a startup. I think this is the approach that we took with Vincere. We um, recognized the need to kind of be a full stack turnkey program that was able to be pointed at a population and also be accountable to the outcomes and, and the performance measures of, of success in, in, in treating that population. And that's what we uniquely did with Vincere. Not only did we have the clinical providers and the technology to kind of reach a lot of people at scale cost effectively with our remote monitoring tools, but also have the, the integration of measuring our success and measuring the outcomes of our of our members and our intervention objectively with a device. I think these kind of factors all combine to make, you know, we've, we've been able to ro- roll out with really large insurance companies and, and manage their risk by taking ownership of that entire stack. Anything, Jake, you want to add before we uh, kind of go part two of that question? It, yeah, the only thing that I um, that I'd echo there from Shalen is like, you know, by virtue of being the you know the full stack turnkey program that somebody, um, you know, United or an Anthem could say, okay, guys, go ahead and take care of this population and give it back to me. By virtue of doing that, you can generate um, it, not necessarily higher margin, but the pie is bigger because you're taking on more operational complexity. So I think ultimately the tech enabled healthcare providers that are gonna win in our space or the ones that can take on that additional uh, operational complexity, make more money doing it. Um, and then I think, you know, we were talking about minimizing risk earlier, you can say, okay, I'm gonna achieve these really excellent outcomes for you and I want a piece of the upside that I generate or a piece of the cost uh, that I generate. So I think there's a few companies in the space doing that really well, but that's kind of our aim, you know, as a, as a company right now. And, and let's go part two to that question regarding the how they're able to, to minimize any risk in doing so, right? Whenever you're innovating, there is some sort of risk. There is a trade-off. Um, usually, it's it's for the best. We need to be innovating to keep moving forward. But insurance companies especially, right, with the information that they have, how do they minimize the risk of basically adopting new innovations? Yeah, I think the, the concerns, some payers might have is a is this going to work b are people going to use the product and c are they going to like the product you know can we satisfy at least two of those things um if we don't then you don't have to pay i think we're we're very comfortable being accountable to what we can achieve and the outcomes that we can bring in terms of engagement in terms of actual um in our case, smoking cessation with our very first vertical of care. Um, We can actively say we can put significant amount of our fees at risk uh, and we can also objectively measure how we're doing because of the nature of our tech platform with the remote monitoring and the biomarker feedback that we're tracking remotely and, and reporting back in real time. That puts us in a very unique position uh, be, in, in being able to kind of uh, remain 
you know, offer this performance guarantee to payers. And I think that takes a lot of the, the concern and the risk off the table. Yeah, doing it, doing it in an objective way, being able to verify it for payers and providers that we work with, I think is a really critical part of value, uh, value creation in, in the US, right? Like in the Medicare and commercial space, a lot of the tracking has been more sophisticated. So you've seen more innovation there. And I think there's only a handful of companies in the Medicaid space that can have really sophisticated tracking and we could even start to talk about value. Um, and again, I think the ones that can do that well are gonna, are gonna be ahead of the curve. Absolutely. I, I, uh, so just so the audience knows too, Shalane, Jake, this, this is their first episode on Slice of Healthcare. The goal is to have them come on multiple times, but this is really the intro to kind of touch base on a few topics with them learn a little bit more about the company, which we did. And then my last question for both of you today is, is what's next for, for Vincere Health? Yeah, I mean, we are excited to share. We have a number of large anchor clients and we are in full swing with uh, some really important pilots and uh, launches in a couple of markets. I think in the next 12 months, our priority is to really execute and prove tremendous value for our existing clients and prove that we are the most engaging and uh, outcome-driven company for Medicaid participants in U.S. healthcare. That's kind of where we're headed. And um, there's so much we can do beyond the smoking cessation uh, just by virtue of our, you know, the, the feedback loop from providing care, generating the data, using the data to both provide better care and report back the value to our sponsors and payers. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm excited to continue following the progress of, of Vincere Health and uh, touching base with you gentlemen to uh, hopefully have you come back on again soon, uh, whether it's a big announcement, whether we want to dive into some other topics, or maybe we pair you with some others in the space and we kind of have a little roundtable discussion, uh, which is something we're starting to do more of. That would be on a different show that we have, but... We'd still be, uh, you'd still be in the network, but uh, really want to thank uh, both of you again for, for coming on here today and look forward to having you on for round two. Cool. Thanks, Jared. Thank you so much, Jared. Appreciate you having us on.